Welcome to St. Christopher's. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider today is our pastor, Father Gabaj. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we have come to worship our Lord. Come around the wonderful banquet table, the altar of God, where Christ offers himself as we receive his wonderful gift. We're called to acknowledge his love for us, and that we are the one people who are called to worship. So let us now, brothers and sisters, acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison Kyrie eleison Christe eleison Christe eleison Kyrie eleison
let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that has woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. From the hands of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fatted cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold to his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came, in to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his feet, bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we contemplate the scriptures today, is there duplicity in your house? Is there more than one master in the home? Who is your king? 
Have you been invited to the feast? What is a wedding garment anyway? These are questions that we need to ask and we should have an answer. The wedding garment, my brothers and sisters, has been given to us in our baptism. It is the white garment that we've been clothed with. When our parents and godparents um, spoke on our behalf if we were babies, uh, they promised to raise us in the faith, to raise us in the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, that we would die in the baptismal font and rise with Christ to new life. This is not just imagery, this is reality that we have been brought into without sin, all things have been forgiven, original sin gone. So each one of us has the potential to be with God always. The unfortunate part is that too often we have more than one master. We have people who tell us all kinds of things and they're telling us things that are really rooted for their, their own personal gain. What did Jesus uh, tell us? He didn't tell us anything for his personal gain. He told us everything for our personal gain. Our gain is a human family to live in heaven for all eternity. The heavenly experience begins here, my brothers and sisters, and each one has been invited to the feast. Jesus delivers this parable for a reason, because he knows well as we spoke last week. He knows well that people are invited and they just decide not to come. Then there are people who are invited and then others will keep them from coming. So, America, we are a land born for the free, born for the potential of finding our God, being able to have religious practice, to worship in the house of God to our churches. and. There are others who do not want that to be. This is a problem, isn't it? There is many problems in our, in our world and in our country. But Jesus is saying, I'm the king, I invite you, I have suffered for you on that cross, I have forgiven your sins, listen to me. Those who have ears ought to hear. You know, these are the phrases that Jesus says often. Amen, amen, I say to you again, amen, amen. It is what it is. But what is it with you? What is it with us as Catholic Christians? This kingdom that we're going into, this feast, this wedding banquet, our garment is the white garment of our baptism. If we are to come into the wedding feast, we should, as we know, come into church without sin. That's our wedding garment. And when we're without sin, what are we? We are literally a reflection of Jesus Christ in the world. That's what we are. And that's the garment. Where two become one, Jesus and the church becomes one. They're spousal. This is love. And it's critically important, my brothers and sisters, that we get the concept not just up here, <laughs> but in here. That we live it from our heart. And that whatever is spoken, whatever is distracting, whatever is condemnatory, we don't take on to ourselves. We suffer some indignities as Christ did. But what will the indignity be in the resurrection with Christ? None. We're called into this heavenly bliss, this heavenly experience. But what about now? How are we as Catholic Christians living this dignity St. Paul says, you know, I've, I know what it means to be in abundance and I know what it means to live in scarcity. We in this country, the United States of America, are very quite privileged in the sense that we have what we need. Yes, we have people who are poor and people who are quite wealthy and everyone in between. But I dare say, if we look at the poor in our country, in other countries, our poor would be considered quite wealthy. But what is it that we're trying to do? To lift up the poor, even in our country. Yes, we should, but it's throughout the world. Because Christ is saying, who's invited? Come, come to the table, come to the feast. And know that I am your savior and your God. 
and his Father in heaven will reward us by our activities, our actions of imitating him, being the person we're called to be. My brothers and sisters, it's important that we live as we ought. But it's also important that we promote what we should live. Promote what we should live. Promote life, because that's how we live. We are alive. Promote the dignity from conception to natural death. Promote that life is valuable, meaningful in all stages, because Jesus came to people in all stages and he brought them healing, brought them cures from their illness, and brought them into communion with him, into the wedding feast, into the banquet, to participate in the heavenly experience. My brothers and sisters, accept the challenge of being true Christians, not just in name only. A, pe a person who can follow Christ, who listens to him, and who actually affects those wishes and commands of Jesus. Let us call others into that dignity, that they, that we, may not have two masters, but one, that there will no, be no duplicity in our households, and that yes, we will be invited with our wedding garment prepared by Christ himself into the kingdom of God. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With trust in God's merciful and abundant love, let us make our requests known to him. For our church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness and strength as we nurture a culture of healing and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawmakers, may God's grace direct their hearts in proposing laws that protect the life and rights of all people, including those yet to be born. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, may they know the healing power of Christ, who is our divine physician, and in particular, for Norman and Mary Lou Vitrano, for Stephen Crutchley, Dave Berniston, John Haddad, Suolowski, Ryan Yates, Terry Rossi, and Monica Franta, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, May the Lord continue to help us speak the truth of in charity to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering under COVID-19, that the divine physician may bring them back in healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they find a place at the banquet in the, of life in the eternal kingdom and in particular for Walter John Gill Jr., Kathy Alder, Angela Rossi, and George Daney. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions nestled within your own hearts.
For these intentions and the intentions of all the parishioners of St. Christopher's Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, our salvation comes from you alone. As we watch over the lives of your people, hear the prayers we offer this day and answer them according to your will. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. Praise the Lord, Lord, in your name. Our good and all is holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and W. Francis Maluli, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with his teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps toward himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. 
Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulihi eribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world of that end. Amen. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Our Lady of the Rosary. Pray for us. Saint Christopher. Our guardian angels, pray for us. all holy men and women, pray for us. Saint Irene and Saint Sebastian, protect our medical professionals and first responders to remain in good health. Inspire through the work of God's grace those who are to glorify God in finding the treatments and cure to what afflicts us at this time. We thank you for your care and for your intercession. Pray for us, Saint Irene, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Pray for us, Saint Sebastian, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we beg you, to extinguish all the fiery darts of the most wicked one, who did grant unto Saint Sebastian, the famous martyr, the defender of the church, and the repeller of plague, to overcome the torments of his arrows. Grant us also to possess the graces and healing touch of words and actions that were endowed in your servant, Saint Irene. Let we too may be an instrument of resuscitation for those lacking breath in you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 